Support for this podcast comes from Staples. Staples is the leading provider in office supplies, offering a vast selection of products and services. Over the last two years, Staples has also become one of America's largest janitorial suppliers as well. From your everyday business essentials to your office furniture, printing, facilities, and break room, Staples can do it all. Staples offers benefits to help create efficiencies in procurement and consolidate vendors to streamline internal processes. Visit www.staplesadvantage.com to learn more. And support for this podcast comes from Ream. Brothers Richard and Donald Ream founded Ream Manufacturing Company in Emeryville, California in 1925. The company has produced a number of cutting edge products since 89 years of operation. Today, Ream is North America's only manufacturer of HVAC, water heating, pool and spa heating, and commercial refrigeration solutions. For more information, go to ream.com. Thank you everyone for joining us for another monthly member discussion. I'm your host, Bob Houchin. Monthly member discussions are your opportunities to hear from members like you explain what they're doing to be successful. Think of it as a little slice of Expo coming to you through your computer or phone every month. Speaking of Expo, uh, October 3rd through 6th at the Gaylord Rockies Resort in Denver, Colorado. That's our next one. Uh, as of today, July 20th, we have over 600 people registered. We're on pace for another record attendance. Uh, if you haven't heard, we're offering site tour visits to three large, profitable, impressive member companies in the Denver area. Brothers Plumbing, Heating and Electric, Fix It 24-7 Heating, Cooling, Electric and Plumbing, and Swan Plumbing, Heating and Air. Almost all of the Monday tours are booked. Few remain. About half of the Thursday tours remain. Also, about 30% of the rooms with king-size beds remain. So if you want to go on a tour, if you want that king-size bed, because we know it's certain path that's important to a lot of folks, uh, please register now. It's going to be a great event. Just go to your, your hub to register. Click on the events tab on the top right corner, and you'll be all set. I had to get that little bit of business handled. Back to the task on hand. This month, we're talking about how to run a healthy family business. It never fails. We at Certain Path with this question continuously, and it makes sense. So many of you are in businesses with parents, spouses, siblings, and cousins. It can add a difficult dynamic. So we're going to talk to two great married couples who also own and operate their businesses. Now, before I introduce them in just a second, as a reminder, uh, as we talk about today's topic, if you have a question, please write it in the box at the bottom of your screen. Uh, the last 10 or so minutes in the hour, I'll ask our panelists those questions. So without further ado, here are my panelists first, uh, Lee and Bethany Amos from Master Plumbing, Heating and Air in Greensboro, North Carolina. Lee and Bethany, please turn that camera on for me. All right, there you are. Hi guys, thanks for joining us. Uh, our other participants, Roof Plus's Anthony and Cheryl Lombardo in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Can you guys get that camera as well for me? All right, all right, technology working today, I'm excited. Thanks everyone for joining us. I'm really excited to have you, you know, for a heating and air business and a roofing business and in the summer for you to make this time. It's not lost on me, uh, nor those participating. So I really, really appreciate it. Let's just go ahead and dive into the into the questions because uh, I want to try this to keep this to an hour. Um, let's start with, and I'll go back and forth. Lee and Bethany, let's start with you. You're the first one on my screen. Um, kind of share how your backgrounds. How did you uh, get into the uh, the contracting industry? How did you get into your into the business? Would you like to start? No, you start. <laughs> so I was from a different industry uh, altogether, okay. and um, I'd seen that there was a lot of uh, need for a service company that could provide a higher level of service, quality okay. service. And so I had a construction background before, okay. but was in, in a different industry, but this changed gears. Uh, started this business and uh, we really didn't get the business up and running until uh, 2014 is when we really started focusing on it okay. and 2015 we got it to to really the foundation beginning okay were, were, after that go ahead oh I was gonna say so Beth you joined it right after that then so you just you launched the business and you as a team started the, the business at the same time Bethany is a registered nurse I don't want to speak for her, but I just wanted yeah. to throw that in there. 
Yeah, 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 Bethany. So talk of real, real obvious transition, right? Nursing to home services. Yeah. <laughs> We're taking yeah. care of people. I mean, you're taking care of people. So uh, how did you get convinced to to start in the in the in the home services business with your husband? Um, I just saw that he needed help, <laughs> and so. <laughs> I volunteered myself. Um, we had just had our daughter, and so I, I was taking time off from being a nurse anyway. Yeah. And said, you know, I really just wish I had someone to answer the phone while I, you know, go take care of calls. And so I was like, okay, well, I'll answer the phone. Like I can do yeah. that. Sure. Um, and so it just uh, kind of morphed from there. He <laughs> hasn't been able to let me go since. So <laughs> that's funny. But, so did you ever did you expect to last this long in it, or do you think it was just gonna be a temporary thing before you went back to nursing? I, I kind of didn't know sure what I was getting into, really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um it just like I said, it just kind of it kind of morphed and um sure. we found out about SGI and we went to a profit day and um you know he he was kind of like well this sounds good but i don't know and i was like no you should do it like oh, you know wow. and um, so we got you to think yeah and so it just like he didn't say well in three months i just need you for three months he just said i just need some help and yeah. so i just volunteered and then you know you got you got more involved and you you see it working and and so um i'm still a nurse i don't I keep my license, okay. but that I'm full time here. That's great. That's great. Excellent. Well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, Cheryl and Anthony, kind of the same line of questioning. Uh, Anthony, did you start? I'm assuming you started the business, or did you guys start it together? Uh, if you didn't start it together, Cheryl, when did you come come into it? Kind of give me the background, please. I'm actually third generation. I was uh, when my grandfather came over here. Uh, my father was eight. And they started, basically, they started a roofing and siding company in northern New Jersey. So okay. from there, it turned into my father doing it and then me working with my father. And okay. I wouldn't really call it a business. It was, we did roofing and siding. I've learned more about being actually a business in the last number of years than being 25 years in actual business. So Okay. Okay. Very good. good. Very good family story. Yeah. And then, um, I actually had my own um, bookkeeping service. Quick, I'm a QuickBooks Pro advisor, so he actually okay. hired me. Oh, um, okay. That's how we met. Uh, yeah, so I started off coming in once a week and cleaning up the books, and uh -huh. uh, yeah, it grew from there. So a lot of yeah. hours. We worked together for about four years before we actually dated. Really, four years? Wow. Okay. Yeah. So it, yeah. you know, kind of friendship, and then and then the relationship started, and then boom. Oh, that's great. So I guess how, how long have you guys been married then? It doesn't sound like it's been too, too long. No, just a year. It was a year in June. Just a year. Oh, wow. Great. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, that's neat. That's, neat. that's neat. So Cheryl, uh, when did it make sense? I, so when did you officially become a part of the business then? Was it, I'm, I guess, when you guys started dating or how did that conversation yeah, it, start? It's been, it was gradual. It just kind of, you know, just kind of kept adding to my my duties, my workload um, over time. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, very good. Well, that's great. Well, the two great stories. Um, let's. Uh, I'll stick with you guys while while we're talking. What's uh, what's the company look like today? Just for for people that are always intrigued by that. What what are you hoping to do in sales this year? Uh, maybe how many people are generally on the team? Uh, so last year we did 1.06 million. This mm -hmm. year our goal is 1.5, and we're already over 900. So we're gonna it looks like we're going to pass our goal by a good amount because fall is our sure. busy time. Sure. Um, so, so far, so good. Um, we have five employees. Yeah. Yeah, five employees. Five in house, um, and then we have some crews for, for all the major work that we do. That's great. That's fantastic. Well, that's great to hear that you guys are ahead of schedule. It's always good to hear. Uh, Lee and Bethany, how about you guys? How, what's, what's this year looking like? Uh, what are you hoping to do this year? Um, so we're about 1.8 million right now in sales, and we're looking to do 4 million, a little over 4 million this year. 4.2 is our goal. 
That's fantastic. And uh, how many, how many, uh, let's see, and you do plumbing and HVAC, right? What, what's the split? What's the split on those two trades in terms of revenue? Is it more, more well, heavily towards an HVAC? interesting story with that. So we've had uh, a few acquisitions, oh. four acquisitions. And four. Between, yeah, we've done four acquisitions. We've done three in the last six months. Oh, wow. Yep. And so they were all heat and air companies. And um, when we started the heat and air up until 2020, uh, November of 2020, up until that point, we were 80% plumbing and 20% heat and air. And as of today, we're basically 52% heat and air and 48% plumbing. So that's interesting. We could do a yeah. whole show just talking about that, all those acquisitions in six months. Holy cow. Yeah. I, I got to ask one, one follow up real, real quick because there's a lots of other things to ask about. So, are, were these just smaller, I'm assuming smaller operators that were looking to get out of the business because they were kind of been in long enough or people that just didn't want to run their business anymore? Well, I think that, that COVID has created some new challenges for folks, right? And, yeah. you know, refrigeration is changing. Sure. Uh, 410A is still on the market now. They're moving over to a propane based. So I think some of the older guys are saying, okay, it's time for me to get out of the business. Yeah. Uh, usually they were in their 60s anyway, 61, 62. Um, they were smaller companies. Uh, two of them were under a million and then one was over a million. So, okay. Uh, yeah. How did so you, how did you, oh, go oh ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, how did you identify those those businesses? Did you send like a letter out? No, we we provide a letter you can send uh, for members that are watching or listening to this that you can cloverleaf your area. What did you guys do? Just word of mouth? I pay a recruiter. Oh, okay. That's interesting. And so they just went hunting for you. That's great. So someone is already in the industry, sort of, so to speak. Yeah. And I tell them if they find me a qualified lead that becomes something materializes, then I'll pay them a thousand dollars. Hey, we sent out good. the letters too. Though. We did the oh, letters. Yeah, yeah, very we, little response. We did okay. the letters. And yeah. Just, I, I think there's different avenues. You, you, you try oh, yeah. all the avenues. Not one thing yeah, is not all, one thing yeah. is always going to work. Sure. So, it, and, and it was really, really looking. So, like, yeah. that's why we did all different kinds of avenues. That's great. Hey, thousand bucks, that's well worth it. So that's interesting. Well, I have to talk to you that at, maybe at Expo or something. That's that's interesting. Yeah, sure. Um, all right. So I'm gonna while while I have you, I'm gonna ask kind of the next line of question. What what are your defined roles in the business? So uh, you know, Bethany, are you other than answering phones, what else have you taken on over the years as the business has grown? A lot. <laughs> office manager now. Office manager now, okay. So who's reporting to you? Like what's your staff look like underneath you? underneath me yes um so pretty much all the office staff report to me um yeah. so all the call takers um and you know we we have call takers that do dispatch you know some days they're doing both or they're and okay. it's one person so um pretty much all of our office staff just report to me um okay and um I'm the office manager, but I have I wear a lot of different hats just depending on the day and the time sure. time of year. <laughs> so. Sure. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. So so then Lee, uh what's your what's your field team look like reporting to you? I mean, do you have any managers below you, like a service manager or a sales manager or anything like that? We have we don't have a sales manager at this point. We have an operations manager that we've hired. Yeah. Uh, and she's been in the industry for about 30 years. Oh, great. Uh, she's an ops manager for a much larger company. We got her to come over to us. And um, we uh, we have two service managers. One for two one service one managers. In there. Yeah. Okay. Now, do the service managers report to your operations manager? Do they report to they you? Do. Everybody reports to me. It seems like they kind of, you know, the operations manager does feel a lot, is going to be filled in a lot of, things from me, taking a lot of my day-to-day -day operations away to help me to continue sure. to grow our business, we believe. And But there's always going to be some contact that I'm, or not always, but there's going to be contact in uh, in between the field and myself it's at least a couple of times a week, just yeah. because I think it's a vital part of growth for us at this point. 
Sure. Well, you're still, a, a, you know, it's a growing business, but still relatively small. smaller yeah. business. Yeah. Who, uh, who manages install? Is, uh, is that that operations manager or do one of the service managers do that on the side as well? We actually have a guy that does installs for us okay. that actually kind of oversees all the other install groups. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very good. That's yeah. good. I mean, there again, we only have two install groups. So, yeah. 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 But well, it's uh, good, good to have two that are busy than three that are sitting around. Let's put it that way. That is right? very true. Yeah, and we're that's looking good. to hire a sales manager, and we do have a sales manager that we're doing our second interview this week with. He's been in the industry quite some time. Okay, who who sells? Do so your technicians sell, or do you have a salesperson? We do have selling technicians at this point, but we are we're going to continue to have some because they're really strong in that area. But sure. we're going to bring in some salespeople as well. That's great. That's great. I always find it fascinating uh, structures of companies. Uh, Cheryl and, and Anthony, let's uh, throw it over to you. Um, what are your so Cheryl? I, you know, obviously you started with the books. How have your your how's your role uh, evolved with time uh, in the business? Um. <laughs> so I obviously I I handle all the the accounting and the the tax stuff, all the payroll. Um, I also do all the HR. As we've been growing and adding more team members this year, it's been a lot of process development. Oh, I bet. Just trying to figure out, because we hired our first sales guy um, in December, so just trying to figure out how to make all that work. Yeah, um, yeah it's it's um, it's actually good timing for the question. We were just at the um, Developing Effective Managers class last week. Yeah, yeah. And. Um, and when we we left, so we were learning all about um, performance reviews and and the whole management process. And um, and when we left, I was excited to do all that stuff. Um, Anthony, not so much. No. So <laughs> well, that's why you guys complement so, each other, but, right? Yeah, yeah. Like we, same we, thing. You'd be we kind of wheels. have we have different strengths and different things that we like to do. So we each kind of take the pieces that we like. Yeah. 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 No, I get that. Um, so in terms of uh, the, the call handling function, are you still answering the phone all the time or who you have? One, one I never answered taken? the phone. Right. Okay. So you have uh, we one have one call taken. Yeah. Yeah. We have, a, we have an office manager. She handles all the, um, yeah. Okay. Very good. Is there anyone that directly reports to you other than an office manager? Does she kind of report to both of you or how does that work uh, in terms of the she, org chart? That's a little fuzzy <laughs> to be um, she she mostly reports to me yeah. um the field guys mostly report to anthony sure um the sales guy depends on what it is but you yeah. know it, it's different things so i handle a lot of the, the financing the customer financing stuff the sales guy usually talks to me about pricing and what we can do he talks to anthony about um Yes, so I pretty much handle the operations end of everything between the employees, the scheduling, the material ordering, the subcontractors, sure. and then Cheryl handles everything else. Basically. I like it. I like it very good. Uh, a quick follow up, Cheryl, because I think this is this is good. Given your guys' size and 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 you're growing quickly, you talked about processes, right? And it's so important mm -hmm. to start developing those as you're smaller instead of you know before you're a ten million dollar business. And believe it or not. We know members that join and are 10 and $20 million and don't have anything written down. They're just relying on the skill of their people, mm -hmm. right? But if something happens to one of those people, then, oh my gosh. Uh, what? Let's talk about the process. I know you just went to that class, right? And so are you just like writing out like what the flow, the, the business flow is, or maybe just kind of, you know, share for, for people that are smaller and, and or, or even at any size that are looking to get more organized. What What's your process being like, or are you planning it to be like? So, so mostly it's been as situations have come up. It's it's a lot of been a lot of developing policies and yeah. and things like that. We had um, well, I don't know if I should share. Don't share. I don't want to start in trouble. I don't want to start in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> we've had various issues with employees that have required yeah. new policies to be developed. <laughs> um, that maybe I won't go into that. detail on. No, that's okay. We can just thirty thousand foot views. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so we're so we're the next thing on the list though is to start the um um. Oh my god. 
Like performance a handbook? Yeah, the performance reviews. Gotcha. So we just went through all that. I'm actually really excited. So that's going to be the next step in the process. Yeah. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to finish um, customizing the performance review sheets. I'm going to pass them out to all the employees so they know what they're going to be reviewed on. And then I'm going to yeah. give them, tell them it's going to be 90 days before we do their review. That way they've got a little time to kind of, you know, think about what we're, what we're looking at. Sure, um, sure. Before we do the review. Yeah, I think um, that was our biggest downfall is the employee end of it, at least mine personally, yeah. the employee end of it. As far as from the sales process, from the call taking to the sales to the production part of it, that we was pretty true. much got that on track and have that all worked out. A lot of it is really mm -hmm. just the employee end of it and really kind of little things kind of nipping them in the butt before they become bigger things and stuff like that and really just kind of making sure everybody's on the same page and going down the same track. Yeah, That's I good. mean, starting... Starting with the sales guy meant that um, information had to get out of everyone's heads and yeah. into a format where everyone can know what's going on because now we have more people involved right. in each step. Um, so we just added on in, what, in like March, we started doing weekly meetings where we go over all the jobs. Um, we're going to be starting trainings once a week um, in the next couple of weeks here. That's great. Uh, yeah, some things that we didn't really need to do when we were tiny here. Yeah, yeah. Well, you start adding people, it, it starts add or adding other things. Mm -hmm. um, just to, to follow up with you guys, kind of a different line of questioning. Do you have any other family that's that's in the business still currently? I know, Anthony, you said your grandfather and your father were in it. I'm guessing they're they're out of it now. Any cousins or brothers, sisters that are, that are in it? Um, our 18-year-old son, he works oh, here. Oh, okay. All right. So, so how's what's what's he doing? Uh, he's a field field technician. So he does job supervision with the sub crews. They do uh, repair work. We have another younger, another eighteen year old guy. One of our subcontractors. His son mm -hmm. started working with us mm -hmm. this year after he graduated. So with them, we're kind of training them. We're going to start the weekly trainings and really kind of hit both ends of it. Do the weekly training from the SGI model, and then also yeah. do another training every week going into the technical end of it to try to kind of work them up into. Uh, service techs and maybe can get them to selling techs eventually. That's great. That's great. So you did, I like that he's starting, you know, he's starting in, in the, the hard part of the job, right? He, he's not general manager at 18 years old. Years old. No, no. <laughs> Why well, hear, we hear things. Uh, so that's good though. He's going to have to earn his way. That's great. That's neat to hear. Uh, Lee and Bethany, how about you guys? Have any, any additional family in the business? Uh, any siblings or cousins? Nothing. So good. That makes it a little less complicated too. Yeah. So. We did. <laughs> Dad. dad. You did it one time. Okay, who well, you you said your dad was in it or a brother? Yeah, he worked with us. My brother my my younger brother too. My younger brother is like 20 years younger than me and and my yep. dad uh my dad retired at eight, in 2018 and my brother okay. um uh, went somewhere else in 2019. So, sure. Sure. Was that a, I, I know it's, it's a tough question, but uh, you know, I bring it up because it comes up a lot. So, and I don't want to make it too awkward, but was it just conversations you guys had, or he just said, Hey, this isn't working or how did, how did that evolve? Uh, my brother, uh, my yes. dad retired, like I said, my yeah. brother was young and, and he really didn't like communicating very well with people. Sure. And you know, in this business, you have to, in all businesses, especially in the service business, or that's roofing or plumbing or heating and air, you've got to be able to effectively communicate with your customer. If you don't, you're squash. Sure, sure. So you guys came to a mutual understanding. <laughs> yeah, he found it wasn't for him. Yeah, and that happens. That happens, right? Better that than you just keep saying, why don't you stay? Why don't you stay? And it just creates other other rifts in the business for everybody. So. And that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. That's part of it. I think that's what I, I wanted to get to for other people to watch that are watching and listening. It's okay. You know, not everyone just because they're family means they're a fit for your business. Um, kind of pivot a little bit uh, and they'll stay with you guys. Um, what, what are your defined, what's your defined vision for the company and what are your values? Do you have defined values? I know at, at certain paths, we talk about core values a lot. Uh, do you have those uh, figured out? And, and if so, how did you come up with those? Did you do it together or or Lee, did you come up with them? No, we did it together. Uh, mostly everything we do is together. Um, <clears throat> we did come up with a core with our core values. Yeah. And we did we do not we moved into a new office building 
Uh, we just renovated it and moved in in, in March. Oh, so we congrats. Put all of our stuff up, yeah. Sure. But, uh, we have been getting settled in and getting our warehouse straight. So yeah. um, we're going to display those in multiple places through the building. Um, yeah. So I think that would help a lot. I like it. What are your What are your core? I hate to put you on the spot, but do you, yeah. do you know them off the top of your head? What What are they? Oh, off the top of our head. <laughs> <laughs> So we have we have core values, but we have yeah. put multiple ones together and okay. took some out that we thought that was maybe redundant. So sure. um, can I get back with you on that? No, that's all right. I, it's all right. I put you on the spot. I'm sorry. No, that's but right. they evolve. I mean, I do know, I mean, there's lots of members I've talked to. They change over time as, as your vision clarifies for what you want. Uh, just because you set them uh, a year or so ago doesn't mean that they have to be the same in, in five years from now. Um, but goodness, um, new office acquisitions. You've been busy the last six months. Holy cow. Um, all right, Cheryl and Anthony, how about you guys? What uh, what are your kind of uh, your values for the business? Have you guys put it pen to paper or are you still kind of in you know smaller business growing? You haven't got to that that point yet. You know, we actually um, developed them at EP um, oh, together. Right. Yeah, that's so. great. Yeah. I hate, um, I, hate, I hate to ask. Do you know what they, do you know off the top of your head? Just because it, it helps other people honest, think of things. Honest, dependable, different. Honest, dependable, different. I like it. Nice and clean and easy. Yeah. Very good. So what did you get? So it was that EP, what was it like at the hotel room after after all day and your brain was fried and you go, Hey, let's figure this yeah. out or what how'd you how'd you do it? Yeah, yeah, that was pretty much it. Yeah. 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 Ah, that's good. That's great. Um, you know, and I, and Lee Bethany, I apologize. I didn't ask you this, but uh, maybe I'll, I'll circle back. How about uh, your goals for the new year, like in terms of revenue and, and profitability and stuff like that? Cheryl and Anthony, do you guys do that together or do you kind of uh, talk about your department separate and what initiatives and things you want to accomplish? What's what's your, your strategic planning look like in your business? Oh, we do pretty much everything together. We mm -hmm. are both workaholics and we talk about work 24 hours a day. <laughs> so, pretty much everything that happens, we talk about. Yeah. Um, you know, a, a piece of our um, our goal for this year actually came from our new sales guy because he had a goal for himself to hit at least 1.5, and he actually wants to hit 2 million. So that's our great. stretch goal. Oh, that's great. So that's kind of kind of where that came from. That's um, that's great. Very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lee and Bethany, let me circle back to you real quick. How about your your when you create your goals for the new fiscal year? Do you guys work on those and together, or do you kind of just work in your own departments and figure out what you want to accomplish in the new year? Well, we do both. Uh, we talk about our departments, and then we come together and figure out what we uh, you know when you're doing the budget, you have to anyway. Sure. And so we're already starting to work on 2023's budget. But good the thing of it is is that we have some things that we have never really put correctly in place, branding okay. procedures. Sure. And I mean, we do things like to help with branding, but to actually hire a third party or a vendor, uh, one of our vendor networks at, uh, at SGI or Certain Path, that will help us, I do believe, and we're going to work on that quite a bit. Uh, sure. Our goal for next year for us is to uh, we would like to grow another 50%. We've been growing 100 or 120, 30% every year. Wow. So our goal is to try to do at least 50% more next year than what yeah. we do this year. And that's yeah. really just because that's, that's really not aggressive enough for me, but that's more <laughs> of a infrastructure completely making sure that we're supporting everything that's yes. coming. So yes. the next year we are going to, try to at least do another 120 percent growth support for this podcast comes from professional plumbing group how many hours in a day do your plumbers waste because you don't have the right part for the job this problem leads to additional issues and reduced productivity poor customer satisfaction and increases your cost per job professional plumbing group or ppg can help you solve all those issues and more we have everything you need to help your business grow and become more profitable while allowing you to focus on plumbing, not inventory management. Go to AuthorizedPlumberProgram.com for more information. And PulseM. PulseM is the number one review generation platform built for home services. 
The majority of certain PATH members use PulseM for Google reviews, customer communication through text messaging, and much more. To quote Bubba Thurman of Baker Brothers, I can't say enough good things about PulseM. They match our core values and they do an unbelievable job. For more information, please visit pulseM.me. Kind of as a, as a follow up, and then Cheryl and Anthony, I'll kind of go through the same line of questioning with you guys. Uh, so Lee and Bethany, how often are you guys meeting to talk about your departments? And, you know, obviously you set the budget, you set a strategic plan, these are different initiatives. It's like you said, marketing, you want to increase your marketing efforts. So you talk about that and you go into the new year. So how often do you guys talk to each, to each other formally about, you know, this is what's going on with this initiative or, you're, you know, talking about KPIs or different challenges. Do you have a set meeting or as a married couple, it's just discussed all the time? Well, I mean, I'd like to have separate meetings, but <laughs> we discuss it all the time. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you... for us, because we, we've got so many wheels turning, it's really hard for us to have like formal meetings. It's, it's more like I'm running into his office, like, hey. <laughs> hair on fire yeah 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 hair on fire yeah. for sure um, yeah, I'm a guest. yeah. <laughs> so um but but the plan is to to morph that and mold that into something where we do have formal meetings once we get yeah. other people that can take things from us and be responsible for those things and you know bring them in and have a meeting like how's this going and this is what we're we're looking at this is what we're thinking about so um it just hasn't it hasn't gotten there yet but that's like the plan sure sure no i understand uh cheryl anthony you guys already said you're, you're workaholics you enjoy what you're doing and it's fun watching it build right but do you so it sounds like you probably are talking all the time but do you have a set meeting or meetings where you discuss about certain parts of the business no, no, yeah, nothing yeah. said. I mean, our desks are, I mean, you can see here, our desks are literally right next desk. to each other. Right, it's one, one big T here, so whenever yeah, we're in the office together, you know, it's basically a meeting. We, yeah, uh, you know, yeah. and then we have our, our weekly meetings with, it's just um, Anthony, myself, our office manager, and our sales guy every week, so we kind of go over things then um, with staff, but yeah, we just kind of talk all the time. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great. Um, I, I think we kind of talked about this a little bit. I'm, I'm going to continue with you guys. Uh, uh, and I think people probably could pick up on it now after talking to you guys for about 20 some odd minutes. What kind of describe your personalities? I mean, and, and how you you complement each other. Uh, I, Anthony, you seem a little more straightforward. Is that is that accurate? Yeah. The sales guy. <laughs> Have you guys ever done a disc, a disc or a culture index, anything like that, to know where you are exactly? No, I've, I've done a disc a few times. No, uh, I, I haven't. I would love to. I would actually love to do culture index. Um, yeah. But we haven't yet. Yeah. So I would say, so you guys, you, you say you complement each other well, right? And we were, I think before we hit record or broadcast on this, you said, you're the one that wants to go and Cheryl, you're like, wait a minute. How about, let's think about that, right? Yeah, she's very calm, which is good. She calms me a lot. She's yeah. very calm. Like we really never fight. We everything's very, that's very good. calm. So whereas I'm more of a instantaneous guy and let's you know very high strung. It's definitely very calming. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, that's the entre that's the entrepreneur. I think that's pretty common. So, but but that's good. I mean, it, like we said, it, to complement each other is is a good thing. Uh, Lee and Bethany, have you guys ever done any of those those personality profiles? Have you? Okay, I see a, a nodding of yes. So what? Where are you guys on that? So Bethany's a really high D. She's a driver. No. So I'm 99% competitive. Okay. I'm economically driven, of course, and sure. I do. Uh, I do like to win. So um, yeah, we um, we both share some of those traits together. Uh, but she is there again, like Cheryl. She is very um, calm. So yeah. like Anthony, myself, and he and myself are, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd classify myself high strung, but maybe someone would. <laughs> what? Like Bethany? Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Well, uh, 
well, well, Bethany, you got to be calm. I mean, that's a nursing background. I mean, if someone's uh, in trouble, you can't, uh, you know, you can't freak out, right? So but that's a good, again, it's a good compliment. It's a good compliment. <laughs> right. So I try to bring a sense of calm because this is a people business, and there's a lot yes. of things flying around and a lot of wheels turning, and and someone has to to bring a sense of peace, like calm, and like let's go back to SOP and let's get this done and just, yeah. you know, focus because, because, you know, you're, you're taking care of people, but then you're, you know, your teammates are also people too. And so you have to have that, that sure. sense of like, we still have a whole day we've got to get through. So <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. And let's do all the smile on our face because, you know, we have to be yeah. here all day. So let's be happy. Like let's, get it done <laughs> okay, i would say and lee just wants to get everything done right now and yes. do it quit asking yes. about it yes. get it over with make another million dollars yes. come on that there's a compliment <laughs> to us because he he does he wants everything done and like let's start it all now because it all sounds sure. so great yeah. and amazing and it is all great and amazing oh it is it is but there's just no way physically that yeah. There's not enough time in the day nor energy between us to get everything done. And so sometimes we do have to have those conversations where I'm like, that sounds great, but like, That's there's good. all this other. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think it's good, though. It sounds like in talking to both of you, you both are comfortable with each other enough to know that you can have that honest you know, comment that, hey, I think this is great, but, you know, we need to maybe do that in three more in three months, you know, because we just we're going to kill everyone, including ourselves. So I think that communication is is, you know, is crucial. Um, kind of to Lee and Bethany, let, let me throw this next one to you. Do you guys are, do you act the same in the office as you do at home? Or do you try and, you know, not be affectionate or or, you know, just try and be very professional? Or how does your relationship change in the office or does it so we're very professional at the office and and no fraternizing or you know we just keep it really professional yeah. uh, i don't think anyone guesses that we're husband and wife because we you know we do care about each other as we yeah. do everyone else but you know we don't fraternize in the office and when we get home she tries to fraternize with me nonstop. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just funny. kidding. It's me. I must admit it. <laughs> I appreciate that. That was good. That was good. Uh, <laughs> Beth and Bethany's face is now red, so that's okay. Um, <laughs> um, it's a company so, situation, though, like we do change a little bit because little bit, you're yeah. outside. Sure. Oh, you're not at work. You know, we have yeah. like events where we go bowling and stuff. Oh, that's and good. So, you know, we'll we yeah. will. Be more natural there than we are here right and that's the point of those activities right to make sure that's how yeah. those, those bonds are, are created with uh with uh, with your other team members so that's good I, I appreciate that uh Cheryl and Anthony how about how about you guys you kind of same whether it's in the office or at home or or do you try and, and act a little differently more professional or how about you guys we're pretty much exactly the same at work as we are at home we kiss hello and goodbye in the office it's yeah very you know friendly and yeah 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 it's pretty much exactly, exactly the, same. the same talk to each other sure. the same way yeah yeah that's great that's great um just to pivot a little bit um how about how about conflict if there's an argument or disagreement i mean do you guys try to make sure it's all settled at the office and, and away from people or are we we you know does it sometimes carry over at, at home and or, or how do you make sure it does not carry over at home that's a big question but and a lot to unpack it doesn't we don't really argue there's really not too many arguments i mean i get hot hated once in a while but for the most part her being as calm as she is it you know it kind of peters away and right. most of the time i'm wrong anyway so it's <laughs> kind of go with that <laughs> You guys, you've been going back to wanting know. everything now, wanting everything yeah. done right now, and right. you know, it eventually will get done, but that's pretty right. much it. But for the most part, it's really, really, really don't argue. That's good, that's a good relationship. That's great. Uh, Lee and Bethany, I, you guys have been married a little longer than a year, so I'm, I'm assuming maybe there's some disagreements. Uh, 
At least I, I know at our house there is. Uh, no, I mean, how do you, if there's things you disagree with at the office or you get an argument, I mean, you try and make sure it's settled at, at the office or I mean, does it carry over? Or how do you kind of reset, I guess? Well, if I may, um, we never really what you would call argue. Um, okay. We do discuss things. Sure. Uh, kind of like Anthony said, I, I am pushing really hard and sometimes she calms me down. We do those things behind closed doors. We come in one of the other's office and do that. Um, just for sure respect, you know, yeah. because that can make people feel uncomfortable in a work environment. Uh, and even if it flies off, you know, very quickly off my head, then, it, you know, I, I have to live with my wife. I have to treat her with respect. And yeah. she deserves it because she's being of, uh, most respectable or she's the she's she deserves respect so um we we do try to separate i mean for us a little different than you guys we do try to separate our personal life from our business life yeah but you know of course you can't completely turn that off and and who sure. would want to, but but when we come to the office we're we're about making it happen and yeah. uh, you know if if i primarily would be me uh going too fast and and i think she's goes too slow sometimes and we get to <laughs> talk about it and we figure out a, a real timeline of something a dedication yeah. and i'm just happy to be here <laughs> <laughs> we, we kind of like because when we were a lot smaller and we had his dad and his brother working with us you yeah. know at one point it was just us four <laughs> Yeah. And so, um, so the dynamic has changed much from then to now because we were a lot more natural with them because they know we're married. Like, you yeah. know, but when you bring other and they were comfortable with us and when you yeah. bring more people in, you don't know their comfort level as far as, you know, being, you know, holding hands or what or, you know, what not. You don't know how if that makes some people some people feel uncomfortable. Um, sure. And so we had to kind of morph with the more people we brought in. And sure. um, even then, like when it was just them, you know, we would have family conversations mm -hmm. at lunch because oh, yeah. we'd all get together for lunch, you know? And right. so it's like, we talk about those things. But then when you, again, you bring other people in, like now I think we kind of have a code or we have looks that we give each other. And we just know, like, if I give you that look, you need to come meet me in my office because <laughs> car and it's not always bad it might be there's a great yeah. opportunity that's happening and i just need to have you for five minutes or you know there is something happening and it's you know hair's on fire and i need you and so yeah. just kind of have that you learn that communication and um and it was something we had to learn you know because when i wanted to talk to him he's like going 100 miles an hour and so i had to get his attention like learn right. the best way to get attention and not make him feel like I was getting in his way of what we're, what he's trying to do. Right, um, right. And so there was a learning process like between us, you know, and there was sure. conversations that I had and said, you know, when I come to you, I'm not going to come to you for something that's nonsense. Like it's going to be something that's important and there's yeah. reasons why I need to speak with you and, you know, let's, let's bring it in an office so that we can be free with yeah. each other. Because when you're when you're like in a call center or you're in a conference room and there's other people, you can't be free with that conversation. Like right. you gotta kinda hold something back. And so yeah. there's no reason to do that when you can have a quick like five minutes with each other and just lay on the line and then make a decision and then yeah. from there, you know. So no, I know the look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. you're the, you're the you don't need a decoder ring anymore. Yeah, you've got it figured out. No, that's good. That's really good. Um, just I'm gonna stick with you guys. Uh, kind of a, a, a shift of, of questioning. How, how have you guys grown together as business owners and operators? I mean, do you guys go to trainings together? Do you read together the same books, or are you just growing so fast that you feel like you know you just go to expos and? And that's kind of what you're doing right now, or what are you guys doing? Right now, we're just trying to get to expos. Yeah, yeah. And we, we bounce off each other. I mean, realistically, because yeah. uh, I value her opinion, of course, because she has an invested interest. And sure. So that, yep. that 
helps a lot. And those are good retreats, right? You get away from the business for a week and, and you, you know, you, you hear different things from stage, you get to talk to other other business owners and it's a good, uh, it's a good, it's a good time away from the business. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Cheryl, Anthony, how about you guys? I mean, again, you're small growing business. It's super busy, lots of hats. Uh, do you guys do any kind of additional training or is it just going to expo, maybe some learning Alliance training? Uh, what do you, what do you guys do? Yeah, it's, it's mostly expo. We do a lot of learning Alliance training. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We've gone to several things. There's been, four events in texas since december oh that's right you um, just said you were just there uh yeah. last week right yeah so yeah what have you um, gone to kind of share with everyone um so we did that in may we did the sales manager class um february, february the specialist class i was supposed to be there but i was really sick um oh boy. yes so i didn't I went make with it, george but... down there in february and then we've done the service essentials online class i think three times this year with the guys and december we did strategic planning with uh rebecca oh good how was that class yeah. i i know that's one thing right. I, I was gonna say people say yeah. it seemed to get a lot of value out of that and it helps uh, as you yeah. get into the new fiscal year it was that's wonderful great. that's good that's good um well i have you guys a, a kind of a shift again uh as i like to do how do you you know i know it's business all the time and you guys enjoy that you know and that's great as business owners but do you ever make time just to have a a date night or, or just take time yourselves to kind of not think about business, but go to a ball game. Uh, do, you, do you do that or is it just uh, go, go, go right now? We, so we, we travel a lot. We really like to travel. Oh, that's great. Um, we do a lot of date nights. We do, we do a lot of stuff, yeah. um, but usually we're still talking about work. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of blends in. It does. Everything sure. kind of, like even you know, this week when we were down last week for the, mm -hmm. the management class there, we ended up taking Friday, Thursday night, we left the class and we went out uh, about two hours west of Dallas for the weekend and stayed at a ranch out there in a cabin. Oh, yeah. So that's it's, great. It, we're still there. We you know, basically make a business trip and then make it into a personal trip, too. So that's what mm -hmm. we typically do in any of the classes we go to. We'll extend them a little bit. Yeah. And then we do travel to it. We're taking all the kids down to uh, with the RV down okay. to Disney next week, at the end of the oh, week for great. eight days, nine days. So we were in Costa Rica in uh, February, February, February. That's good. Um, yeah. So it kind of balances so out the 70, yeah. 80 hours a week kind of balance out to a I, couple of vacations a I year. I feel so. like the only time we stop working is when we leave the state. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I think that's good for people here because you are a small business and, and that, you know, obviously you could just work all the time. Right. But you make time to at least a couple of weeks, get away from it. So your brain can kind of just you know, reset a little bit. So that's good mm -hmm. for, for other people to hear that's it's possible, right? You just got to make it happen. Um, how about hey, Lee and Bethany, let's throw kind of the question over. Do you guys try and do a date night or a trips or do anything? Or you just been so busy the last couple of years growing up, 100% a year that it just hasn't happened? We've been so busy. Yeah. We <laughs> but we right. talked about business the entire time. Yeah. 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 No, I get that. I get that for sure. Do you, well, you got Expo again, you're getting away for that that time. Do you do you just stay the three days or will you stay an extra day or pretty much just you get in and out? The first time that we ever stayed an extra day was this past one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, no, that's, that's all right. We're like yeah. there and we're working the whole time we're there on our computers and then we're back, you know. Yes. We back, Some things you know. are getting a little, you know, we're getting our freedom. So. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's good. Well, and again, you know, you're starting to put managers in place and hopefully you'll be able to a little bit more, more freedom as, as, uh, as you continue to grow. Um, this is, this is kind of a tough question, but I, I, um, I think it's important. Uh, and that's why I bring it up and I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and throw it to you guys first, uh, Lee and Bethany is, uh, would you have any kind of a succession plan? You know, uh, should something happen to one of you or both of you in terms of who takes on the business? I mean, you're so small at this point. Maybe that's not the case, but I know that's something again that we talk to members a lot about. You know, God forbid something happen. Um, do you have anything in, 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 you know, in mind legally, or, or just uh, you know, on paper somewhere? Well, we did um, like a living trust. Yeah, um, that's good. In 2018, that's and good. Um, so at that time, it looks different than it did you know then um sure. but we did that then um and it 
uh, basically just um, if something were to happen, it, it only enacts if something happens to both of us. Sure. Um, and it just gave um, people that would, you know, we designated people that would take on different things um, and basically everything would go to our daughter like she wouldn't have, it wouldn't go to the state and go into probate right. or anything. Right. But, but she's only six. So mm -hmm. we had to set up people that would manage those things but for her like until, you but know. Both things are, but both things are important. I think that's good that you're sharing that information as well. But, but I mean, as far as the business, um, but the business went to her as well, like all the assets, all the things. Yeah. And that's, I guess what I'm getting at is it, it kind of encompassed everything at that time. Yeah. Um, and we designated people to make decisions based on what would benefit her the most at, right. the, at the time that she needs it. Um, and we actually probably need to do an update because it looks so much different mm -hmm. than now than it did then. We've sure. got a lot of other irons in the fire um just more, because more real estate just yeah more real estate yeah. just like different things that have been acquired over the course of acquiring businesses and growing and sure. you know so um definitely need to, to, to have some changes but as far as you know if something were to happen between like just one of us we have had personal conversations like yeah. here's what you need to do here's yeah. the way i've got this you need to call this person. Um, we need it written down, and I keep saying that when we yeah. have those conversations. But um, yeah. you know, it, it's more him giving me direction um, mm -hmm. because you know, he holds all the licenses. Um, all the things are in his name, pretty much. Um, and so it's more him saying, "Okay, this is this, and this, you know, you know, just all that stuff." Um, yeah. But we have some conversations where I'm like, "Well, if it's." me like you need to know this stuff because yeah you know there's there's a lot of knowledge here that happens day to day that you're going to need that to kind of move forward um well, and so sure. we've had the conversations you know just personally but right now we yeah. don't have anything like formally written down yeah so our yeah. next kind of plan on that our next step is the operations manager we bring in they have their time they're starting the first so in a week and a half uh, they have licenses and they will be putting them in a the company name. So that will help us as well because that's the problem. Like if something happened to the license holder, then we have to fill that spot within 30 days. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. So you're, you're thinking that through. That's, I think both of that's really important, the personal side and the business side, right? And, and I think for a lot of the people that are watching, I mean, you guys are all, thankfully, everyone seems to be doing well. You're accumulating assets. You want to make sure everything's protected because no one wants the state to make decisions for you. So uh, if you can avoid that. Um, Shelly, Anthony, how about you guys? Have you, just, have, you, have you got anything on paper yet or is just discussions? Do you have any kind of succession plan or anything to protect what you're building and, and what you built thus far? Uh, not yet. No, nothing on paper. We yeah. need to. We each have life insurance that's separate just for the business, but that's yeah. pretty much it so far. Yeah. We that's definitely on our to-do list. Yeah, no, I mean it's uh, not uncommon. It's not uncommon. That's but that's kind of why I wanted to bring it up just again for the benefit of everyone else that's that's watching or listening that doesn't have that. That's because it's it's a good a good piece to have in place because you guys are gonna. I know talking to both of you this last hour, I think you you know you're just the beginning of your story in business. I think you guys are gonna continue to grow and and do great things. Uh, all right, last uh, just two just a couple final questions. Um, Cheryl, Anthony, where do you see? Let's let's talk about long term. Well, where do you hope to see the business in five to 10 years? Have you had those fun conversations about, you know, what you think you guys can do? Yeah, uh, five to seven million, somewhere in there, yeah. in like five years. Yeah, the five yeah, years, yeah, five, five years. to seven million is about, yeah. about uh, the five-year goal and 10-year goal is probably about 10 million. That's great. That's great. Have you put anything to paper yet to kind of think about what, a, what kind of positions you'll need to add? Or is it just at this point more of just... Uh, you know, just kind of hope, uh, kind of a hope and vision. Yeah, working on uh, org charts. Well, we've got to, um, I revise them. I go through them in my head and revise <laughs> them. I have them all, and then kind of, and even on the plane the other day, updating them again. Kind sure. of really see where we need to be. So that's great. But that's definitely, great. Our, our big goal in the next probably month is really to roll out the org charts to everybody working here to kind of see where they can go and what positions yeah. we want to fill and what could become available. Yeah. Kind of really show them what, 
where they could, they can move up in the company basically. That's good. That's good. That's good. Org charts a good tool for a lot in a lot in a lot of different ways, and you just outlined a couple of them. Help you know decide what you're going to do in terms of growth, and give everyone a little you know hope and see that you know even if you're a smaller business now, you hope to be a real big business in the in the not too distant yeah. future. Uh, Liam Bethany, how about you guys? I mean, if you keep growing 100, 120% a year, you're going to be about $120 million here before long. <laughs> no, but what, what do you uh, what do you see in the uh, next uh, five or 10 years? What are you hoping to do? Well, we hope to be at uh, 10 million in two years. That's great. Uh, we hope to be uh, 30 million in seven to eight years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and if you put that on paper, how that's going to kind of happen, again, an org chart or, or different positions? Definitely have a work chart. We've been working on that, revising every year. We just reviewed work charts from when we started. And yeah. we reviewed everything in the middle yesterday. And it's kind of unique to see that we said, let's do this by this year. And we actually beat it by 100,000, which is not a, a lot, but it still beat it. So It still beat it. That's great. That, that's super exciting. Well, good stuff. All right, last question for each of you, and then we'll, we'll let you go. And I, again, I can't thank you enough for your time. Um, just any, Lee and Bethany, any final advice you might have for the audience as it pertains to running kind of a healthy family business? Anything that you might have learned that you think would benefit others? Um, always pay attention to the small things. Mm -hmm. For me, you know, it's um, small things matter. I mean, no. Don't get completely as you know caught up in it so bad that you don't move on. But sure. you know, a lot of people are always looking for the big things only, and right. the big things only sometimes. But if you're not paying attention to the big things or to the small things that's included, you'll lose your profit margin. You'll lose your, you know, uh, and it depends on material costs and what the type of business is, of course. But for the plumbing, and heat, and air, we pay very close attention to all of our margins and percentages. Sure. Lot, and we sure. found it our friend sure <laughs> yeah for sure bethany how about you any any kind of final words piece of advice for for other couples or or just you know people watching about business um i i think if you're if you're like in a couple situation or if you're in a family situation um just knowing that you know there there does have to be some kind of separation you know yeah. to, to family and business and being okay with that and yeah. and individually setting to you what that looks like um because like i said for us it was a learning process you know and it's a learning process for everybody and it looks different for everybody so it doesn't have to look like someone else's it just has to be where you can have good communication and sure. you can um you know that other person knows that when you come to communicate with them it is out of love and respect and um for the good of the business if you're at the you know if you're at work it's for yeah. it's i'm doing this for the business if you're at home you know we're doing this because we're at home and we're having a home discussion um yeah. and I, I think that's really key is just always remembering to to be re be respectful respectful and flexible you know yeah. because as you grow and as you learn things are going to look different and it's not always going to look the same you know today as it will in two years and That's so true. just kind of going through that process of being open to the process and just open to communicate and and enjoy the ride <laughs> yeah 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 i mean two years is things have looked probably much different today than they did two years ago for you guys right yeah. so for sure uh cheryl anthony it's kind of the same wrap-up question uh just any final advice you might have for the audience about running a, a happy healthy family business <sighs> For me, as I'm told often here in the office from Cheryl and from our office managers, for me to stay in my lane, basically. So, <laughs> so I'm not going to say who. Some people get very offended when I go in QuickBooks and actually start looking at reports. Um, but that, that's my not biggest looking, thing. Touching. Touching. Well, I like touching. Anything. Touching. I, um, I hear that. You know, I'm, I'm, she's amazing at what she does. As far as technical goes and quality control, that's my yeah. end. That's my, my my stick. So really, kind of, she focuses on that end. I focus on my end, and you know, yeah. this, you know, we can go anywhere with it, basically. Yeah, that's just good. just let each other do what they do best. Yeah, you know, that's good. Yeah, communicate a lot, and remember that you have to go home with the other person. 
<laughs> you know what? You guys take this all for, I, I don't want to say you take it for granted. You, you make it sound so natural, uh, but I know there's people that need, need to hear that. So uh, that's good. I will say for us, it kind of is, I think it because we worked natural. together for four years before we even dated, I really think yeah. that we kind of came in with the same mindset as mm-hmm. when we did start dating. So that definitely helps. Sure. sure. No, totally understand. That makes sense. All right. Well, hey, Lee and Bethany, Cheryl, Anthony, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for everyone who's watching. Uh, finally, this available, this video will be available on the Certain Path member website uh, next week. Uh, then it'll be distributed as an episode of the success as the Successful Contractor Show, which is available on YouTube and your podcast player of choice. Thank you again for everyone. I look forward to seeing you at our next monthly member discussion, August 24th. Our topic will be performance management how to build loyalty through coaching. I look forward to seeing you then. Have a great day. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Take care. Bye-bye. That's Lee and Bethany Amos of Master Plumbing, Heating, and Air in Greensboro, North North Carolina, and Roof Plus's Anthony and Cheryl Lombardo in Point Pleasant, New Jersey, discussing how to run a healthy family business with me. I hope you enjoyed today's show. If so, please like and subscribe on YouTube. If you're on your favorite podcast player of choice, please leave us a five-star review. The two seconds you take to leave a review will help other success-minded contractors like you find us and hopefully get a little bit better, which elevates our entire industry. And please join me for future episodes. This has been The Successful Contractor, powered by CertainPath. Support for this podcast comes from Goodman. Since 1982, Goodman Manufacturing is focused on the goal of producing energy-efficient, high-quality HVAC equipment that is easy to sell, install, and maintain. Goodman's continuous efforts have contributed to the success of HVAC dealers like you across towns and big cities throughout the country. Goodman produces a complete line of refreshingly affordable ducted split systems and packaged units. The company's current product line is supported by numerous technology enhancements, many exclusive to the Goodman brand. It's no wonder millions of homeowners say, thank goodness for Goodman. To learn more, go to GoodmanMFG.com. The Successful Contractor Podcast is part of the Certain Path family. Certain Path is the largest member-owned best practices organization for independent residential services contractors. We provide our members a competitive edge through proven proprietary management tools and expertise, marketing programs, training, and group buying power, along with a highly active and eager to help membership. For more information about Certain Path, visit mycertainpath.com.